what is this account? He plays Timo ADC with Ignite. What? He just took off Double Lift's head? Straight up. What? This I gotta I gotta know how he reacted. He's playing Karma Zaya into Shaco Timo and got farmed. I gotta see what happened. Now that's content. Yeah, and then he turned off his stream. Yeah, I would probably be sad too. Thank you for the introduction, former pro player and all-time league streamer Pell Belter. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I hit Challenger playing Teemo ADC. And I'm also going to show you how you could do it too. It is a simple, straightforward pick that has a bunch of pros and a bunch of strengths you can abuse in the bot lane. In this video, we're going to be going over tips and tricks runes and builds which are very versatile how to play laning phase how to play level one specifically how to get cheese picks and how to overall out tempo and outpace and outplay the enemy adc and get you free op that's not going to last for long so stick around learn a couple things and make sure you drop a like and subscribe if this helps you out and gains you some elo it all starts with why teemo adc i was playing top lane teemo like everybody else and i just ha had enough of my bot laners going 0 and 10 inting flaming each other flaming the jungler and i figured bot lane can't be that hard i'm playing teemo who's a marksman let's give it a go and that was the original concept i've always been a mentally chill player i tend not to flame people and this was how it spawned and that was working great but now 150 games later and on the cusp of hitting challenger there's so much more to timo to see and so many more reasons why he's actually a good pick so if you are a timo player that wants to play bot lane and wants to get some free lp stay tuned if you're an adc player that also wants to have fun again because that is the new way we're going. Stay tuned. And we're going to break down every reason why Team ODC is the legit and viable pick. So, of course, in League of Legends, you always have to prove something's viable. So, here is my account at the moment. I'm 565 LP. And as you can see here on my profile, it is going extremely well. We hit 600 LP recently with a 71% rate. On this trajectory, I'm going to be challenger in no time. There shows no signs of stopping now. We're versing high-tier players every single game, right? We have Potent Belter on our team recently. We versed Doublelift and beat him versus pro player Sven and beat him. And you can see the match history here. The proof of concept is there, right? It is just a month ago we started taking off and really pushing our limits. It's a lot of wins, not a lot of losses, right? And this account, there's no tricks. There's no doing, right? This account started pretty much in master tier, um, and we've just been climbing ever since. As you see our, our weekly chart here, we started pretty high elo. I'm sure we started diamond or whatever and hit masters pretty pretty quickly, but there's no tricks, there's no duos, right? This is all just me queuing ADC Teemo alone and making it work and having success. So this is kind of the proof in the pudding. And like I said, on this track, we'll be challenger in no time. These stats are freaking awesome. Let's just take a let's take a moment to talk about Timo's pros. Why is he actually a good ADC from a game fundamental standpoint? So first off, obviously his blind is really powerful in the bot lane. Not only can you blind the enemy ADC and they do no damage, you also can blind a ton of the support's abilities. And we'll talk about this in the matchup section. But the first things that come to mind is Alistar stun, Leona stun, Nautilus bonk, Blitzcrank knockup. These are all blindable. So Teemo serves as a pseudo counter to those supports. And of course, in addition to his blind, Teemo is really strong early game compared to other ADCs. Sure, you have those oddball. I don't think anybody's as strong as Draven, right? The champion does so much damage. But besides him, you are stronger than 90% of the ADCs bot lane. They have a better early game generally, and you scale just as well. Another big thing that makes him a better ADC than top laner is his passive. You get so much more value stealthing the bot lane bushes with your support, getting cheese kills, especially level 1, and also level 6, putting down a shroom, you could 1v1 any ADC in the game, right? So that's just three pros, three game fundamental points to convince you why to play Team ODC. Now let's hop over to the Bills and Runes. All right, let's hop into it. Runes and builds, the meat and potatoes, the most important part of starting your Teemo ADC journey. So there are going to be four pages you can go. Press the attack, fleet, summon Aerie, 
and Dark Harvest. I'm not going to go over why we're not using every other rune page. We're going to focus on why these four are the best. So it starts with Press the Attack. This is the most common rune page for the past two, three years on Teemo. Because when you deal three autos, you do extra damage. It sets up your whole combo, right? And it's very fair to do three autos. But you can't take this page every single game. That's why we have the other pages. But this page is the best when you are versing an engaged support. So if the enemy locks in Nautilus, Rel, or any tanky, beefy boy like that, because they go into you, you shred them with three autos, you kill him easily. It makes the lane really easy, and it shows how strong Team ODC is. You can also go this page when you have an engaged support, because if they have two, they have an enchanter support and an ADC. Well, if you have an engaged support, they go in, they CC, you still get the three autos. So that's when I like to use this page. You go press the attack, you go triumph, because you're getting a lot of kills bot lane. Alarky for the attack speed, Kugrao for the damage. This secondary is very optional. I prefer Slurity Nimbus Cloak so I can dodge, have more move speed, and not get hit by anything. But in reality, you can kind of go whatever you want here, right? A couple of good pages are Cheap Shot, Ultimate Hunter, or Taste of Blood, Ultimate Hunter for the shrooms and the scalings. You can go Bone Plating if you think uh, you need it to survive Burst and Overgrowth. You can go Free Boots if you're feeling crazy in Futures Market. You can kind of go whatever you want. But my go-to is Slurity and Nimbus Cloak. Um, and then for your sub runes, attack speed, AP, and flat health. You don't want to go scaling because as ADC, you're not going to get access to those levels as fast. So I like the flat health for early game because we do want to focus on winning lane and playing for the lane. We don't want to just sack lane and scale. It's the worst way to play league. So this is going to be your first page versus engaged supports or having engaged supports. Now, what if there are no engaged supports and it's ADC enchanter, ADC enchanter? Now we have options. So Fleet is going to be a safe way of playing Teemo, and the rest is the same, right? Same rune page besides Fleet instead of Press the Attack. This is a survivable, safe rune page, right? You can auto them, stick and move, you heal a little bit, and this is a survival rune page. It's on the safe side. It gives you that stability and lean. And this is going to be versus non-engage support and not having engaged support because we're not going to have access to those autos off the rip. And now, same scenario, summon Airy, right? This page is going to be way different, and we got to talk about it for a second. So, again, same scenario, no engaged supports, because, again, engaged supports equals press the attack. But this is going to be a hyper-aggressive way of playing Teemo, and a lot of people's favorite way of playing Teemo with poke and maximizing your poke. So if they have two squishy champions, now if you go Teemo and you're going to pair this with Max and Q, you now have a lot of damage on your Q spam. So auto Q, run away, or just rip the Q on them, you're doing a lot of damage. Now you don't do this versus engage champions because they're tanky summonary damage doesn't stick. But versus two squishy champions, the, the poke sticks and it's a really nice way of playing Teemo. So if you look at the page here, we go mana flow ban because when you have Q Max, you need access to the mana. Absolute focus, more damage. And again, I think you need to play Teemo ADC early game focus. So I opt for Scorch instead of Gathering Storm. And the secondary cheap shot really combos well. So if you look at this combo, auto Q, you're proccing your cheap shot damage, you're proccing your Scorch damage. That's a, a lot of burst on one single Q. And then Ultimate Hunter just for the stream scaling. And you'll notice here we're going double adaptive force in the, instead of the attack speed because we're really maximizing that poke, right? That auto Q, boom, does a lot of damage. So this page is going to be your go-to. If you like playing that poke-based Teemo, that Q max Teemo, spam the Q, run away, play a little safe that way or play however you want that way. Now, the last page is going to be the highest or highest reward, like good old Dark Harvest. So, again, secondary up to you. You could go Alacrity and Coup de Gras. You could go Slurring Nimbus Cloak, whatever you choose. But Dark Harvest is the ultimate high risk, high reward. Bot lane, you have, you have access to a lot of procs, right? But again, this is very risky because to get the kills as Teemo early game, you have to be strong. Dark Harvest isn't strong early, so you're in a little bit of a debacle. But if you feel like you can get procs off easily, this snowball is out of control so quickly. So Dark Harvest is the ultimate 
high risk, high reward. If you're feeling yourself, if you feel like it's a snowball lane, this is an option. Again, I would I would use this when it's a squishy lane because more chances for procs, and you'll probably pair this with Dark Seal. So those are going to be the four rune pages, right? Press the attack, fleet, air, and dark harvest, and all the situations when to use the rune pages. Now let's get over to the builds to pair with these rune pages. This is where Teemo ADC or Teemo APC becomes the pick that we need it to be. You have the versatility to go AD or AP based on the enemy team and based on your team comp, which no other ADC in the game has, by the way. So you can play this champ every single game and get really good at him and never be punished from a team comp standpoint. So we're going to drop into AP first. So AP is the more common build and the quote-unquote better build, um, which is going to consist of starting with Doran's Ring. And then for your core items, I put Swifty Boots here, but you can really go any pair of boots on Teemo. Swork Boots are good for more pen. Berserker Boots, if you feel like you need more attack speed. Swifties for movement speed. These are the default because they're so strong right now. I mean, heck, you could even go Defensive Boots if they have a double AD or double AP lane, right? They have a Senna Aphelios Steel Caps. They have double AP Merc Dreads. So Boots are whatever you want, but here is going to be where the build makes its magic. So the core items for me are Malignant's Leandres. Uh, ooh. Well, that, I wish I wish that was a Redor regular. Uh, yeah, Orn, thank you. But the the core build is Malignance and Leandres for me. These are the items I feel best on Teemo. Malignance is a is a no brainer, right? It gives AP, haste, mana, and a lot more shrooms that do more damage. Awesome. Leandres is a staple on Teemo. It does percentage max health damage and a burn. Also increases your damage. Um, so those are the two core items. You'll notice Nasher's tooth is situational for me i think nasher tooth is still good i don't think you need to build it every game i only build it versus tankier teams but if you want to build it every game it can easily be a core item as well that's fine but then everything else you notice here is a standard ap items right void staff if they have magic resist shadow flame if you want to do more damage death cap late game zonyers advantages if you want to live lich bane to survive so the ap teemo is more standard and cookie cutter right and there's not much to it you play teemo he does a lot of damage right awesome champ simple champ so this build i'm not going to spend too much time going over because we all know and love ap teemo right but again this build is oftentimes the best because it is the most consistent you do damage it scales all items are pretty good this season and you can go ap teemo every single game pretty much right now when would we not go ap teemo so you don't go AP Teemo when your team has a lot of AP champs. For me, if there's four AP champs or more, I'm not going AP Teemo, right? If we have three AP champs and our lucky team, I'm going AD. With three AP champs, you can still go AP. I still recommend it. But more than three, uh-uh-uh, right? And that's including the Teemo. Because when you have four AP champs or more, they start stacking so much MR and life sucks. So now we're going to go ahead and go to AD Teemo. And this is the flexibility of Teemo right here, why, why you could pick him every game. And, of course, Teemo never gets boring. So AD Teemo, by the way, you still start Doran's Ring. This is the strongest start in the game. Um, that is why we start Doran's Ring. We're not starting Dark Soul or Cole or, or Doran's Blade in the bot lane because we need to be strong ASAP in the bot lane. Early game matters. Early game is king. So you start Doran's Ring, and if you're going AD, first item, Kraken Slayer in the bot lane, it does tons of damage it got buffed to be a super early game item it's super good it's insane and then you're gonna go terminus second item because terminus is actually the most broken mind in the game just as some it, it has to be very uh itemized very niche itemization for it to be broken but if you look at the stats on this bad boy of course riot client doesn't show you but i have it memorized you do 30 magic damage on hit 40 ad 30 percent attack speed but the juxtaposition rotates between light and dark the hybrid pen is 10 percent armor and magic pen per stack you get three so you get up to 30 percent armor and magic pen and the mr and armor is somewhere around 30 in there so this item is juiced to the gills alone but this creates ad teemo right the kraken slayer gets your you converted to a lot of ad damage so if they rush magic resist and they stack mr guess what you go kraken slayer they no longer 
are super tanky, right? You shred them. Boots, again, same spiel. You can go any boots you want. So Kraken Slayer Terminus, and then it's situational, right? If you need more AD, you have to go Blade of Rune King. You don't have a choice. So if they're stacking MR, you need, like, 100% physical damage. You go Bork. If they're not hard stacking MR because they know that you went Kraken Slayer, now you have options, right? Rage Blade for more damage. Zanya's for defensive. Riftmaker for, like, an overall decent build. Jack Show for super defensive. And it goes on and on from here, right? With on-hit Teemo, you want to have... At most, three attack speed items and then tankiness. Because if we're auto-attacking them a lot, then we're going to have to be almost in melee range and we're going to have to be tanky. So on hit Teemo, there's a lot that goes into it. Again, I think AP is better in most games, but if you need AD damage, this build is really good as well because Terminus and Kraken got buffed very recently. So AD slash on hit Teemo will be used as well. And that is going to be the two builds I use for the bot lane. There are other builds with Teemo, but those are going to be the ones that I think are the most competitively viable. We have one last thing to do before we hop into the game. We're going to do the Teemo ADC matchup tier list to get you prepared for what lanes you should be excited for, what lanes you should be trembling over. So let's hop right into it. Teemo bot lane, we're doing the ADC matchups because your support is a different factor, right? Their support, your support, that's going to be a whole different ball game. That's why bot's so fun, right? The variables are insane. But this is just isolated in a vacuum, one-on-one Teemo versus other champions. So we're going to start with who does Teemo counter? Which champs is Teemo unironically the best ADC into? It's going to be Draven. It's going to be Vayne. Where are you at, Miss Vayne? And I'm pretty sure there's one more. Tristana. I th believe there's one. Da, 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 looking, looking, looking. All right. That is going to be who Teemo ADC hard counters, right? So these three champions are very auto attack based. As auto attack based champions, your Q puts an insane value right you can see how easy it is draven runs at you with his q and he's running at you auto attacking blind you can't do anything for four seconds trish jumps on you blind can't do anything vein tumbles into you blind can't do anything it's really again timo's not a hard champion to understand but he is a hard champion to play around right his damage his blind in the bot lane it's insane so these two champions you should be picking timo into you should be going to lane ready to kick their butt ready to win lane now of course you can always lose a game of league it is what it is but these are the best matchups for teemo and now we're going to go to what champions absolutely poop on you and a lot of it comes down to ranged right let's drag Jin over we'll drag caitlin over actually we'll save caitlin because she's kind of stinky right now uh there's samira and there's nyla where's nyla where are you miss nyla Oh, is she not on here? Hmm. Okay, well, Nyla would be third as well. Okay, and then uh, here, Yasuo, of course, and Zig. So these are going to be the matchups that Timo gets countered by. So Jin is going to be the first one. Jin is just insane amount of range and poke and pick, right? If he W's you and snares you and has his ult, he usually one-shots you. If he just Q's W, all these things are ranged abilities. The thing with Jin is that they do so much insane damage, and this champ is made to kill squishies, right? Everybody knows tanks counter Jin, but you're playing Teemo, you're not playing a tank. So his damage is just through the roof, and he has CC, he has poke, and he has massive damage. Now, Samira and Nyla also counter Teemo. Because they have a wind wall. Same with Yasuo, right? Samira can dodge abilities, your Q. Yasuo can put a wall up to dodge everything. And then Nyla also dodges your autos. So these champions have amazing all-in potential. And they dodge major parts of your kit. They counter TMO. Also, Ziggs is standing for any mage. All mages counter TMO, whether it's top, bottom, mid, left, or right. Uh, mages just have more range and they usually do not go down easy and they poke from distance and their major weakness is gap close which Teemo does not have so all mages also counter Teemo again you don't automatically lose the game when these champs get locked in but it will be a long game you're going to want to make sure you know you and your support are on the same page but that's why bot lane's awesome it's always going to be winnable right you go down CS all good no worries and you scale 
So now let's just go through all these champs and put them on the tier list um, with everything in between. So S is where Teemo counters. These are the best lanes. F is the worst lane. So A will be a good lane. B will be an okay lane. C will be a 50-50. D will be them favored. Uh, I'm not going to do action. It's not really play bottom. Same with Corky. Ezreal is going to be C. It is going to be a 50-50 lane. He's actually pretty good into you because he can scout you with his Q. Right, he can get you out of stealth. He can get you out of the bush. So he's actually pretty decent in the Teemo, but Ezra's not really that scary. So he's not like, oh my god, I'm crapping myself. Right, Varus. Um, again, the range thing. Varus is not a champion that has to auto a lot. He pokes you with his E, his Q. He does a buckload of damage. He has pick with CC, but he's not like insane. Right, Varus isn't gonna be Jin levels of one shotting you at level six. So Varus, same deal. Right, eh, it's okay. Could be worse. Senna is more of a support now, but I will give Senna into the F tier to counter Teemo because, again, you'll notice the range plus CC combo. It's kind of broken, honestly. Senna has range and a CC, right? She can Q-poke you, auto-poke you, and snare you. You're noticing that trend. It's kind of not fair, huh? Um same deal. She single-handedly could shut you out. Jinx is broken right now. So Jinx is usually a very easy lane. But she's pretty broken at the moment of recording this. So we're going to put her into B. She has a little bit extra range in you. But her chompers are really easy to dodge. And she does like no damage early game. So it's really not that crazy of a lane. Uh, so she's going to stay in the B tier. Pretty neutral lane. Kaisa, same deal. They're, these are like clone champions. They're very, very similar. Right? They have a little bit of poke. They have a little bit of range. Instead of a uh, a chompers, Kaisa has a dash, right? But they practically function as the same champion. Lucian is a really fun lane to play into. So again, Teemo's going to Lucian. Why? Your blind gets value. You blind his double auto, right? He gets his passive off. He gets the double autos. Boom, boom. Guess what? You blind the double autos. They still go through. So they eat up his proc and you take no damage. So very good lane. Misfortune kind of hits like a truck early game, but nobody really plays Misfortune. Also, she doesn't scale worth her crap, so she has her Q poke, which hurts, but you can easily dodge that. The Rain of uh, Fire on the E, it hurts a little bit, but you take one proc and leave. But she really is just like an early game snowball or bust kind of champion, so I kind of like versing her. Ash is just kind of stinky right now. She has a little range with her volley. She has CC level 6, but that CC is really hard to hit for her, and she hits like a wet noodle. She's been doing like no damage as of late. So that's going to be a favorable lane for you. Twitch, again, pretty easy lane. He opens on you. You blind him. <laughs> again, Teemo's not that crazy. I hate to admit it. Not that hard to play mechanically. So, yeah, blind gets mass value, right? Zaya, same deal. Zaya is an, like an auto-attack-based champion, right? She has to nail you with a lot of feathers. She has one form of poke, right? But for the most part, she has to get those autos off. She's got to auto you. She's got to land a plethora of attacks. You go blind them easily. Cogmore feels like the same deal. A lot of, you know, the ADC role, a lot of it has a lot in common, right? Uh, okay, Cogmore, guess what? He auto attacks you. <laughs> he has a little bit of poke, but nothing crazy. Um, yeah, pretty chill. Uh, a, he's pretty weak too. Pretty good lane. Zeri is, um, Zeri is interesting because. It's very hard to keep up with, like, her poke. You know, she, her auto, she jumps back and forth. She has wounds. She, she autos, autos, weaves in and out, pokes you. She's very hard to keep up with, especially since she goes static shift first item, so it gets kind of tricky. But it's still an even lane through and through. Sivir is just free. Like, Sivir is free. I'm not going to put in the Teemo counters lane, but it is a free lane. Very stinky, right? A lot of these ADCs feel like they're not even playable. Like, when's the last time you've seen a Sivir, Zaya, and all that? A lot of these ADCs are genuinely bad. And again, Teemo is not a bad champion at the moment. Teemo hasn't been a bad champion in years. But a lot of these ADCs are just generally not played that much. Sivir, just outdated, right? Stinky champ. Okay, Aphilius is D tier. So Aphilius isn't, doesn't counter you because he takes a lot of skill to play. And um, in high elo, they're noticing that Aphilius is going to Teemo. If you look at my profile here, I'm um, versing a lot of Aphilius. There's one right there. Zven has been perma picking Aphilius into me. He picked it right there. And I'm pretty sure there's another Aphilius game recently. So he's kind of getting some, uh, some play time again. 
Well, it looks like just those two. But Zven in particular has been picking uh, Aphilios into me, and it's a pretty hard lane. Um, Aphilios has extra range. So Aphilios has range, and he has that Zeri like poke where you always have to be on your toes. And, of course, he heals. His life steal is surprisingly a lot, so you can't really poke him down. So he is D. Maybe he counters Teemo if he's a better champion, but he's still really hard to play. Callista is going to be awesome in the D tier because she... Although your blind is really good into her, she does an overwhelming amount of damage early game. Her damage is super oppressive. She can life steal through a lot of things, and she has that execute. It makes it really tricky to tell when you die or not. And then last but not least, Caitlyn in the D tier as well. Maybe C. She's kind of stinky. I'm torn. Uh, we'll put her in... We'll put her in the C tier. I feel like Caitlyn, so C is like a 50-50 lane. Caitlyn does counter Teemo, like, in game sense, in game logic and everything, but she's just stinky. She just stinks as a champion right now. The only Caitlyn to ever kill me is Saber, right? But a lot of Caitlyn, she just does no damage at the moment. So, again, this is all relative to what's going down in solo queue at the time of this recording, Season 14. But this is going to be your matchup tier list for Teemo. So, again, you love playing Draven, uh, Tristan Vane, you counter them. You can tell your team you're the you're the bee's knees. And the A tier is also all really easy lanes. Be careful in the F tier and D tier. But for the most part, like Teemo, again, when you look at these champions, Teemo stacks up really nicely. A lot of these ADCs just flat out stink and Teemo doesn't. So going through this actually makes me feel good about Teemo playing ADC. I hope it makes you feel good as well. Now let's get into what actually matters is the gameplay. Now let's hop into the gameplay because this is where bot lane is going to be the biggest learning curve for a lot of people. Teemo ADC, the biggest thing that has been helping my climb is getting to lane level 1 no matter what happens. It's season 14, you don't have to leash your jungle anymore, that thing is a thing of the past, right? So I immediately go bot lane every time, I do not scout, I do not leash my jungle we play for lane winning lane is the best thing you can do in solo queue so i get bottom level one and again right these are good players you know good players on both teams uh grandmaster says challenger lobby poom is an ex-pro player that's my support uh s y s s y u is the best collie in an a so these guys are top tier and we see them walking around right we see them walking around cool I'm sitting bottom. It may look like I'm AFK, but guess what? It pays dividends. And every game I'll do this. I'm going to show you another example after. So we're bot lane, and it just so happens they do the same exact thing, right? They're not leashing their jungler. Jungler's starting rates. They're going bottom as well, but I got there first. And now keep in mind, when you're playing bot lane and you have a melee support, you should be losing lane. You should lose level one. They should get level two first. Double range is very potent. But instead, I got their level one. I have press the attack because I have a support with CC so I can land the autos. And look how well it goes. I focus Lux because Zareth has cleanse and ghost. So I focus Lux. We get the jump on her. We run her down. Look at that. Now, all of a sudden, this game is looking a lot better. It goes from having a losing lane. Now we have a winning lane all by getting to lane bottom level one as quick as possible. And of course, if you fast forward, we had a heck of a game. How could you not have a good game with that start? 12, 6, and 8 did massive damage. We, we bought gapped pretty hard. All four Drakes. Beautiful. Let's go on to another example. This game is going to be for my main account where I'm queuing Team ADC as well because I freaking love this role. This game isn't Grandmaster Challenger, but this is more Masters to Grandmaster. So still good players, not versing pros every game, but the concept is still the same, right? We look for an invade. It doesn't work out. They had it warded, and I get my butt right back down to bot lane. I think I also throw some support, some, uh, some pings on my support to get his butt down here as well. And then again, you'll notice I go to the same spot. You can take the middle bush. You don't have to. I will take the middle bush if my support comes as well. But if they don't come, I don't take the middle bush. But as you can see, I'm sitting here bottom. I'm waiting. When Nautilus comes bottom, I take the middle bush with him. And Ezreal tried to do the same because that's how you play bot lane. Look at that. Another kill. Another kill. And also goes to show you what is this, the Janna doing, right? It's like, she should be there. She's hanging out with Lee level one. She should be here with Ezreal. But again, I'm on top of things. I do this every game. This is a habit now. And it nets you free kills. 
And of course, guess what? Do we win or lose this game? We fast forward. There it is. Another performance. Eight, three, and five from your boy. <laughs> so you're noticing the trend here. And again, it may look like, oh my god, Ezreal's inting, but even high low players get lazy, right? But you don't get lazy. You're playing team of sport, you can't afford to get lazy. Get in that bush level one. Okay, now we're hopping into another important thing about bot lane with the level one specifically. But if we don't get a kill level one, because that's not going to happen every game. As you can see, I'm in my spot, right? We're waiting bot lane. Our support's waiting in the bush, so I'm not going to go in that mid bush just yet. Lane is starting. We are playing Timo Soraka versus a Zeri Bard. So again, this is important to note. Zeri Bard have the ranged advantage. And this is on Timo 2 to 1. A lot, as you can see, a lot of good players in this game. Poe Belter, former pro and successful streamer. Karhus, the rank 1 Karthus in the world. And LL Summit, he is a pro player summit, right? So again, a lot of good players in the game. We're versing good quality players. Grandmaster Challenger game. So again, game mechanics says that we should get pushed in they have zeri bard bard can stun level one zeri has more range than me we have timo soraka timo has no range soraka is not a bully right so we should get pushed level one but here is another fundamental you need to get pushing for the wave right you want to get the wave slightly pushing in your favor and you get level two first if you get level two first now you neutralize and now you can actually play the game if they get level two first, they can push you on the turret. Now you miss CS. Now it goes poorly. So you can see here we're laning. I'm mostly hitting the minions. Sorak is poking a little bit. I get a little chunk on Bard there. And I took fleet footwork. I took fleet because we don't have an engage support. It's double range or it's double range. So I'm not going to get the pressy attack autos. So I'm hitting the wave. I'm poking Bard a little bit. But you notice I'm not playing scared. I'm playing Teemo. Although I have no range, I'm not playing scared. We got another poke on Zeri. Me and Sorak are both chunk her. But this is called playing for the lane, playing for the wave level two, right? We're poking and pushing at the same time. We want to get level two first. We don't want to be down CS and down tempo, right? We want to also be able to roam. Now we get level two first, boom. And now we're secure in the lane. Now if you play it perfectly, you can bait them in. If you have a Nautilus support, you get level two, then hook, it's a free kill. But at the very least, you get level two first so you don't get behind, right? Very, very important. And this seem, may seem hard to do at first, but again, it doesn't matter what the game mechanics say, especially at lower ranks. Because if I could do it at higher ranks, I'm not the mechanical god I used to be, okay? If I could do it at higher ranks, you could do it at lower ranks. So make sure you play for that wave level 2. It's a really important fundamental. We're going to fast forward a little bit here. So early game laning phase will be very just dependent on each game. From level 1 through 5, level 6 it changes, that's why we fast forwarded. But level 1 through 5 will just be very dependent on do you have HP, do you have a lead, how's your support playing, what if they roam, all the works. But we're going to fast forward to level 6. So this is going to be leaning phase from level 6 till mid game. Mid game starts at 14 minutes when the first turret goes down, right? So this is going to be your level 6 Teemo power spike, which is probably the best, strongest spot in the game for Teemo compared to that enemy ADC. So as you can see on your screen here, I, I always stealth near the wall on either side. So on this wall here or over here, I usually put a shroom in front of me here, um, but I have a shroom in the bush here. And this is going to look really silly, but you get so many free kills. And this is what you play for. If, if lane never goes well, you play for your level 6. Because at level 6, when you stealth and have a shroom down with ignite, you're always going to be able to solo kill an ADC. An ADC. You're always going to be stronger. It doesn't matter if they have an item or not. right? This is Teemo's power spike. This is beautiful every single time. So this game, I want to know Ezreal's 1-1. One one. I don't have an item lead. I have barely any items at all. But I have press the attack. I don't even have ignite. But I have my stealth and a shroom. And ADCs are always, they always have to push the wave in. And they usually go for tower plays. But at the very least, they push the wave in. And guess what? I have a shroom there. He hits it. Look how simple this is. I come out of stealth, and I run him down. This isn't rocket science, people. I'm not this crazy ADC main. I'm not double if reincarnated. I just play Teemo, and I know how to play him. But again, look at this power spike. I don't have ignite, and I don't have to use my flash. He has ult, he has flash, and exhaust. I don't have an item lead. 
I don't have a CS lead. We are not ahead. Um, furthermore, our support's not our support's behind too. Nautilus level five, Janus level six. So this is not a winning spot for us, right? We're just chilling. And again, you're always gonna be able to create opportunity. It doesn't look that hard. It doesn't look like rocket science, right? Timo's just stronger level six than every other ADC in the game. So this is gonna be a very pivotal point and a very big power spike of Timo, the level six shroom all in. And again, put them, I usually stay against the wall and put it near the wall. So when they push in the wave, they smack right into it, but also the bushes are really good as well. So here we are going over another very realistic game situation that will happen a lot to you. And it's going to happen even more in the future patches with grubs being buffed. Manko, what do I do when my support roams and leaves me and never comes back? This is going to be very common. So the first thing about playing ADC is that the average ADC main is going to die 2v1 and flame their support. You see it happen time and time again. So again, playing Team ODC, we don't have that wiggle room, nor do we want that wiggle room. I want to actually win. So you're noticing here, I have a rumble support. I'm 102 down 2 CS, Rumble's 2 tune 2. So we've been duking it out. And you notice Grubs are spawning. So my Rumble is not coming back bottom, you bet your bottom dollar, right? So now we are tasked to 2v1. And again, Teemo does this really well. As you can see, I set up my cell spot. I have a shroom here, I have a shroom there. Now, you have to realize I know Rumble's gonna get Grubs, right? We're getting an advantage on the top side of the map. So I just have to not die. And that's really all you do. It's not flashy gameplay. I put up a little bit of a fight. We open up on Twitch. We clear the wave with a the shroom there. Now Twitch has half HP. And Janna has a little bit chunked. And I'm just hanging out. Again, this isn't, it's not rocket science gameplay. But you'd be surprised how many ADCs don't do this. And we successfully hold the wave. And we get grubs for free. And now we force Twitch to base. So again, I wish I was going to show you a highlight reel, you know, of me getting a triple kill, 1v3, but it was just very simple. We get a free grubs, I hold the tower, I deny plates, we push out the wave, and we're chilling. Now look at this setup. Now. See, now look at the difference here. You thought we were done. Now the Janna roams. So now the Janna roams, and Twitch has to 2v1. Well, guess what? He's no Teemo main. He's no Manko 1. He walks up to the turret. That's a classic ADC main. Now look at the advantage we got. Look at that right there. I 2v1. We chunk one of them. We chunk two of them. They have the base. Twitch has the 2v1. Dies and we get two tower plates. Do you see how important it is and how good Teemo is bot lane? That stealth and if you have a good mindset... You're going to win every damn game. It really isn't rocket science. It's not crazy. It's just smart, consistent gameplay. Now let's hop over to the mid game. I think we've covered laning phase and everything about laning phase. Let's over to the mid game, 14 minutes and beyond. Now that we've covered early game, let's head over to mid game. Mid game is around 14 minutes or when the first tower goes down. That starts the mid game. It lasts usually about 25 minutes and 25 minutes post is going to be a late game. So this minute... The laning phase ended at 17 minutes, so a little late. As ADC, this roll is the easiest to macro-wise. And look at this game. You tell it's not going well early game. <laughs> Let me press tab again. Let's see it. This is for my stream as well, by the way. It's why um, it's a different little looking a little differently. But this game's not going well. As you can see, we're getting absolutely pooped on. I'm 5-6. and six. The enemy cliss is 10-5-5. Five, and five. We're down 12 kills and two drakes. It's looking a little doomed. But we had good mid lane macro. That's why we're highlighting it, by the way. No spoilers. We won this game, by the way. Just saying. Never tilt. So this is the mid game. As ADC, this role is the easiest to mid game. Top lane is the hardest. Playing top lane team is so hard to push and not be scared and do all the top lane stuff. But ADC is very easy. You go mid lane. That's ADC's macro. You, after lane fades over, you now go mid lane and you push mid. You push mid, you push mid, you push mid. You go to the objectives, you push mid, you go baron. You go push mid, you get turret, drake, baron, top, whatever. You're playing mid lane now. That is ADC's macro. And it is up to you to tell your team, hey, I'm going mid lane. You ping on your way mid, mid lane is now yours. Everybody should know that ADC gets mid lane. The reason why, also we pick up a nice little kill here. 
Just kind of get this back into it. Flash for it. Beautiful. Graves. Oh, Graves almost joined that. Plus 1k. But again, I get that kill there because I'm mid lane. I'm doing the proper macro. Mid lane is the safest lane for ADCs to farm because ADCs will be the lowest level after bot laning. So you need to be safe farming. You can't 1v1 a talent in the bot lane or a top laner in the top lane. So you go mid lane to farm. Um, and that is where this game starts to get better. As you can see, we go mid lane. Their Callista isn't, you know, was playing cocky. We punish, we get a thousand gold. Now all of a sudden it's looking up. Now you may notice I go right back to mid lane. We can go mid lane to Drake. We can go mid lane to Baron, mid lane to top. We can go mid lane to anything. We're going right back to mid lane. That is the macro for ADC, and it's up to you to ping it. Tell your team the works. Now, there is a fight here. We're getting in the fight. Okay, Malkov flashes over. Looks like we're losing this fight. That's okay, though. We would absolutely pooped on. I'm ADCing. We're auto-attacking. Almost get a kill, but we're not quite. That's okay, though. Oh, do I get a kill? Team ODC is broken. Another 900 gold, by the way. Another 900 gold. That's insane, right? But then right back to mid lane. So you notice, I go right back to the wave. We shove it with the shroom. You notice this is the macro here. And then for mid lane, we could do whatever we want. Now it's like, hey, now we have mid lane. Now look, I can go anywhere I want. Now we go top lane. And all of a sudden, this game's looking winnable because of the good macro there. So you see this mid game play? This is exactly what you're looking for. Now we get another kill top lane. And again, this, again, I'm, I'm mentioning on every clip just to let you all know, this is another Grandmaster Challenger game, right? But it stems from, these players are pretty decent. It stems from that macro. Now we just open up the game. I got 2k gold on myself, and it just from going mid lane after laning phase end. So that is what your mid game should work look like. Now everything else is going to happen, but that is a mid game scenario where we were losing we had good macro in the mid game from 17 minutes to 20 minutes we got so much done now all of a sudden we're in a winnable game now also this video will be used this game will be used for the late game because i put in so much damage so stick around for a second and we'll get looking at the late game here for timo but again i can't stress it enough this pick is easy the mid lane the mid game macro is easy you just go mid lane you see again i go right back to mid lane then we go mid lane to baron right that is how to play adc in the mid game kicking off the late game in the same game because this game is a real testament of the mental in the team ODC. Again, we're still it's in a losing gonna... situation, as you can see here, 16 to 26 on your screen. But we did just get Baron. So now the late game macro, late game's around 25 minutes till the game ends. But obviously it's 23 minutes in this game. Late game hit a little faster since we got Baron so early, right? It's all like ballparking based on items and all that. So late game, Teemo. It gets a little dicey, okay? Late game Teemo, late game ADC gets where that gray area, we kind of have to do it all. So now late game, mid game is just going mid lane, getting the wave pushed in. Late game, you now have to push the wave mid and also always be in the team fight and then sometimes not team fight and get it in hips. It's a lot, I know, but that's playing ADC. It's pretty tough. Um, so here we got Baron, and then we just rammed it down their, their throat mid lane, right? As you can see, a team fight's about to start. I'm here for the team fight. Let's look at the value I provide, Team ODC. We hit a fat shroom there, two-man shroom. Nocturne's dead. We pop Callista. Callista's dead. We get Nocturne, uh, Callista, and Maokai. You can see, Team ODC, the damage is unreal, right? I have three items at 24 minutes. The damage is unreasonable. We just blew that team fight up beautiful and we keep fighting we kill victor it looks like as well again the damage is unreasonable look at that damage it's it's legit op i don't understand how adcs are re regular we don't get the renekton quite renekton cleans two of us up but we still had a great team fight right so this is the late game how to play team odc be in every team fight if you can if it's a good fight if you can't look for the split push maybe look for the side lean if you can't, just get ready for objectives. That was a good fight for us, and we cracked mid and hip. Now, when we get out of base, we go get the midway first. It looks like Drake is there, but Yone is dead. So I, I opt not to fight Drake because you can't take every fight. Yone is dead. We push out mid, and we go to top lane. Put some damage on our neck, and don't quite get a kill. That's okay. But then, you know, another fight's going to break out. And we're pushing, right? We push the mid lane in once or twice. The mid wave, we are going to miss the mid wave here, but we're staying top. And now we're looking. This is, again, Team ODC. We're just trying to create opportunity. We do a lot of damage here. I'm going to be waiting here. 
This is where Timo gets unique. You can set up picks. As an ADC, you can't really make picks. You can't really make assassination attempts. But Timo ADC, you bet your butt you can, whether it's AD or AP. So here, we set up the kill Renekton, and we kill him. That's a freebie. Boom, beautiful. And then, of course, it's, we're in charge of getting the waves. We're playing ADC. We're soaking up all that farm. And now we're back to pushing. So we make a pick. This is like the side lane aspect of playing ADC with Teemo because you unlock it all. We push the wave in. Yone's dead, so it's still 4v4. Let's gear up for another team fight. And again, ADCs, you have to play the team fights really well. That's why the roll is so hard. A team fight breaks off. Graves gets caught. This fight's looking terrible, but we're juicing. Look, at we're putting the damage down. We're killing Nocturne. Nocturne's 1 HP. We have a look at this shroom. Boom. That's the team OEC magic right there. We get a fat three man shroom. We kill two of them and we almost kill Nocturne. We single handedly saved that fight. So, again, we are part of another team fight. We lost a team fight, but we put in so much work. It was outrageous, right? And that's just team OEC in a nutshell. Yone was able to clean up a kill and then. Late game to finish off the game here. We go back mid lane. Now check this out. We're in another team fight. So you notice I'm in every team fight that's possible. Every team fight that's decent. So we push mid lane. They hit a shroom. We're gearing up for another team fight. We're there. I'm not just farming. I'm not being a silly ADC mean farming bottom for no reason. I'm there for every fight. We put a shroom down. They're going hard on us. We put another shroom down. So we kill Nocturne with the shroom and poison. We got a three-man shroom there, and we kill the whole team, allowing our team to clean up. We win the game. Right? And this game, we're still down nine kills, by the way. I completely carried 17, and 9, and 5. Insane game, right? We were opportunistic. We got the mid-wave in, and we were there for every team fight. And this shows the power, the carrot potential of the Team ODC, right? That damage is unreal. That damage is unreasonable. And it's all just from playing ADC. The early game, the mid game, the late game, we all talked about it. And there it is. That's a complete Teemo game. That's just one example, right? We're playing many. Um, and look at the damage done, 53 and K, completely unreasonable. We doubled their ADC, legit doubled their ADC, right? Insane. So, yeah, that was a good example of the mid game and late game. Um, yeah, Team ODC is broken. I'm watching this back. It's just Team ODC is just broken. It is what it is. Now I have two games lined up for you. One, the first game is going to be me stomping a early game powerhouse of a lane. I'm not going to tell you which one. You're going to have to watch and find out. But this shows off the early game Teemo's strength. The level one, the early game fundamentals, how to vibe and play with your support. And the second game, we're not going to stomp early game, but this will be a game we also won where we scaled and we had the good macro and the good late game. We're showing off Timo's late game power spikes as well. So enjoy these games. Apply the fundamentals that we talked about in this video so you can get free OP as well. And again, if you win some games with this pick, make sure you drop me a like and subscribe, and I appreciate you. Enjoy. It's going to be a tough lane. Let's see what we can do here. Very Nautilus scary. If Braum eats the hook, we're looking okay, though. I can just auto. Okay, we have to ward that or else we're never going to get prior of the lane. Make sure not to take too many autos from uh, Mr. Draven here. It obviously has a range advantage, so. Pretty sure if not hit that, that'd be good for us. It's actually really good. Good job from Braum. That was a good poke. We are jungle. Probably should ward behind us. I think we have a ward left. Bali's on his way though, so we're actually kind of chilling. Gotta be, gotta be ready for the flash nod on us with the Udur gank. Now, if he can sneak in an auto there, we definitely would might be able to kill. Bro, where are the junglers at? Neither of them have ganked yet. Junglers, what's going on here? No ganks yet? Neither bot lane has warded the river. What 
It appears they might have Ward of the River. Can be a little scary. He's got no flash. Okay, massive? Not massive. Nice, there's Draven Cleanse. I was waiting for the Draven Cleanse to do anything there. Oh, massive. Oh, I couldn't get the Q off. No range. Oh, sweet fucking god. What is this, bro? Oh, man. I messed up by not, uh... By not queuing there. Rasp is here. Interesting. Um, their Nautilus is full HP, so... Ah, uh, I saved my... Oh, shit. Okay. We need to shove this to look at our wave. It's pretty in a bad spot. Um... I messed up there. I needed to get... I needed to let them tank. They wanted to tank the turret for me. I, I went first. But we, we did good saving. We saved our first blind for after the Draven Cleanse, which was really smart of us. And overall, overall it worked out well. Overall, we're playing way better than we should be, right? That worked out. But I think it could have been better. Good job from Nautilus pulling the wave. Like, really smart of him. But I can't do anything about that. Overall, really good, but it definitely could have been a little bit better, I think. We need to time Draven Cleanse. It's really important. Fuck. Do you guys know... That was a good play by me, too, flashing for the Udyr. I think that really worked out. But we didn't kill him, but it, it set, like, the pace. Um, Man, when did when did he cleanse? 210 is 3, three minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, if this was a bad room from Braum, like, how am I ever going to push this wave out? Oh, nice. It's pushing back to me. That's good. Wow. I'm surprised they broke the freeze. Um, shit. What was I saying? Yeah, four minutes, two... So, three minutes, 30 seconds from four minutes. So, what is that? Like, 6.30-ish? I think it's really important because that determines if I could 1v1 him or not. I had to give Brom some time to come back bottom. I can't die here. Now for some poke, though. Oh, I'm dead. Wait, I blind. Chill. Okay, massive. I got. I'm not gonna lie. I got lucky. I got lucky, and also team was broken. Okay, I got. I. I mean, I got lucky, and I played it well. We got lucky and played it well. We didn't panic. We. Bl we. We. I got the three autos on naught. We didn't panic. We blinded Draven after it came back up. He has no cleanse. That Nautilus was just waiting behind the, the wall. That was wild. Missing a lot of CS this game, though. It's not good. I, we don't die here. There's no way. We can turn this. One more auto? You got it? I don't... Oh, oh we're fucking trolling, aren't we? Okay, maybe not. I'm saving my blind. Okay, I don't think I don't think it's possible to lose this one now. How how like there's no way we lose this, right? Did I miss time Draven cleanse or did he not use it? Holy bot gap! This is a bot gap of all time. Sweet good lord. Azir could come. Also, we're not even bother it. We're not even helping Volley with Drake. That's wild. Not helping volley with Drake there. It's pretty dumb of us. But this is a bot gap of all time. I have to make sure I don't die. How do I not die this game? Just don't die. Easy. Okay. We go Nashers. They're tanky as fuck. I mean, TFT is amazing. We love TFT. What's up, Tumakos? How you doing? Thanks, buddy. Armed and ready. 
Mako, you're fat and bald. <laughs> I mean, I uh, okay. Uder's top side. We see that. So I'll auto wherever I can. Oh my God! I die. Oh, I can't believe I die there. Oh, that's not good. I can't believe I die. I did not need to. You gotta shove that, you gotta shove that. Ah, oh, that's really bad. Really bad and greedy of me. I didn't think I needed to do anything. Oh, I can't believe I died there. That's so close. That was so close. That's not good. At least, you know, silver lining. Reporting in. Silver lining is that we have everything up for this fight. Okay, I'm here. That's fine. This is, I think this is free. Almost. Do I really just sit here and die to that? Unreal. Could be worse. That's fine. I mean, we get grubs either way. That's really fine. It's actually really fine. I died of the, the freaking Bali R. I mean, the Uder R. We get grubs, it's all good, right? That's what we wanted. Armed and, ready. and he's okay. What's up, Monk? How you doing? And he's just okay right now. I wouldn't say good. As a stretch. Okay at best. Yes, sir. Dude, imagine <laughs> Nautilus has... Nautilus isn't even level 6 yet. And when he hits level six, I think the game's gonna get a little bit harder. What I miss? Pretty sure if I get hooked, we st we'd still lose this. I have to ward that to get him out of that bush. I mean, ideally we want to shove this. Okay, Uder's top. That's good. Uder's showing top. We can kind of breathe and not die. I mean, we could run. We could run this down. I'm the Swiss scout, bro. I need flash. That's fine. Okay, we just need to shove this. Only way we can ever dive is we have to we have to shove this first. But this dive is looking pretty forced. I think Uder's in a haul ass bottom. Getting tower plays is pretty cool though. Oh, that's massive from Brom. I don't really want to fight this to be honest. I think I'm gonna decline that offer. I'm gonna hit this turret. Yeah, I mean there's Cassanta. We're we're out. We let him die, that's fine. One death for a TP, that's really fine. Brom, don't you go over there, you little rat. One death for a TP is really fine. Did Nautilus ult? Does anyone see? We see Uder there. Uder's gonna come back bottom. We just gotta get ready for Drake. Oh, we're going. I'm here from the river. This is fine. Unless we play it really bad, this is fine. I mean, this we should just run them, right? If we just run at them, save my blind for after Draven cleanse. Damn, that flash is wild. 
That isn't that the that's a panic flash and a half. Okay, Braum, you're not supposed to get a triple kill, bro. Taking all the freaking kills, I'm reporting you. Yeah, I just got ran down. Good job by way, you bought a lot of time. We had six grubs, nice. Okay, like this game makes me feel like Timo Botling's broken, is it not? Like bro, Timo Braum versus not Draven, why are we winning? We're freaking winning, but team like Draven Nautilus is a good lane and we're stomping. It's not even close. I'm going to look for another kill because I need a little bit of gold here. He has no cleanse. Oh, it's smart that he's not pushing it immediately. I need 50 gold. Oh, it's really smart for him. Just that move alone makes it so I have to go wait in base. Really smart move from him. Um, I need to go mid. I have mute all on. Um, you little rat, get get off. Yeah, get off that, you little rat. I mute all on, but they can see what I'm typing. Okay, so as ADC, like, you have to macro, right? Like, ADC, you, you're entitled to the mid wave, because then you're close to Herald. And it's the easiest wave to farm. Like, if Wade goes bottom and dies, well, sucks to suck, right? You have to... That's your role. The mid laner, mid and top get sideways. ADC gets mid wave, right? He has teleport as well, so it makes it even more of a uh, no whammy. So we hold down mid. It's easiest farm for us to get. And then we help with Herald and everything else, too. And, it's kinda, and you have to force your way into that. I should just be sitting mid, in all honesty, but we'll take a peek at this. Our, our problems with volley for some reason it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I'm here. This is fine. Got blind, so it should be fine. Okay, massive. Good plays. They're holding mid together. That's actually fine then. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. What are they going to do? They have two bottom, two mid. We, we get this tier two. Oh, this is for you. Hit this bad boy. We have six scrubs, big boy. Hey, there's going to be five bottom. Nice. You get to kill massive. Well, right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. They're not over here. Oh, GG. Oh, baby. Dude, the ADC Teemo is real. We are on a tear, aren't we? The ADC Teemo is real. Holy shnikes. Braum played it well. You got to give it to him. Braum played it well. Good, from, good game from him. But we are on a little bit of a tear, aren't we? I mean, that's a nice start, honestly. Even if we don't get the kill. Oh, he just gave up. Oh, that's great. See see what I'm saying with Team ODC? Average ADC main, right? That's an average ADC main. If you don't do that, you're already winning. See what I'm saying? And then he's probably flaming Janna. So for that, he's probably flaming Janna. Why aren't you in the bush level one? Unreal. FF. E-girl, right? So it's like, just don't do that and you're winning as ADC. We gotta be careful of the least singed. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy that hook didn't hit. Gah, e girl! Fucking whore! Gah! Lee's going top. Okay, the wave's pushing us, so we gotta do a little chill in here. I mean, I don't, dude. Being a woman on the internet playing League is hell. I, I mean, you gotta, you gotta think about it. 
If you are a woman streaming the game, you get called ego whore boosted every single day, right? So it's like, I would probably ban those words too. That shit would be mind numbing. Like I get triggered when you guys blame your team, right? You guys don't even blame me. You guys will say, hey, my support stinks. And I'll get triggered and rant for an hour. And like now imagine like someone flaming you for something silly like, you know, your gender. Like that's wild. I'd be fucking banning everybody. Whoops. We got our flash, which is more than we can ask for. I think Nautilus is dead, to be honest. Oh, nice. He didn't die. That's good. If he hits a hook, I'm down to game. We got Janna Flash, which is, I think, generous. I don't think she even had to flash, to be honest. We're just shoving. I should be able to push this out by myself. If I can't, that's going to be really bad. I should have said, hey, um, I should have said push wave and then grubs, right? But I'm hoping they just don't capitalize on this, which they might, it looks like. Hey, okay, nice. I've been going Swifties first every single game. I think it's kind of poggies. I'm going, um, a oh, no, I'm not going AD this game. That was the last game. Whoops. I mean, our jungle on our support are really late, so if this leeson's decent, the grubs are gone. They're late. Super late. I think jungle was farming camps. Nautilus just took a Kind of bad timer. But good luck. Oh, Lee's not there. Look, no, they're not late. Now I just have to survive bottom and we, we gain an advantage. Gah! My horse support is roaming! Ah! Missing CS! Whore! <laughs> Why do people say that it's an insult? <laughs> it's so stupid. God, we're winning lean and you're roaming. Ugh. You suck. I hate you. Sexism. Racism. Rope. Dude, look at that CSing. I'm clean with it. I've gotten better. Can't win. FF. Yes, you would think they're trolling. You would think it's like ironic, but it's not. A lot of the cases. I mean, I'm down to go Drake, but I'm just going to patiently wait for our jungler. Our jungler! Oh, I guess I'm, I'm going to head over there. Oh, that's chill. I'm just going to stay bottom then. Dana will be there. I got level 6. That's pretty cool. If we could die bottom, that'd be super cool. I don't think it's going to happen, though. When you're playing ADC, and when you're playing any role on Teemo, you only roam if you have to. You don't want to just roam nilly willy. I wonder if Janna comes, I don't think they even kill me, to be honest. I gotta get this shoved. Nice try. I mean, this is chill. They can't do anything. Yeah, we should probably pull that out. Oh, we, we, we want to look for a fight here. We don't even want to flip it. We want to fight. We're stronger. That's chill. We still want to fight, to be honest. I was hoping I could get that ward. That would be cool, Shanga, but I've always been a no add-on kind of guy. When I played WoW, I just take pride in not having add-ons. I don't know. I just feel like the game's cooler that way. It's like a personal enjoyment thing. 
Just when I'm playing WoW, no add-ons. League, no add-ons. It's just so yeah, it's like a... What the fuck is this? I don't know what you're doing, big boy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what he's doing. I can't help you there, buddy. No can do. Can't help you. Don't know what you're doing, but I'm not going to go down for it. Uh-uh. Maybe this works, maybe it doesn't. It is Flash. Got the heal. I mean, that's pretty chill. I hope they don't punish me. If they wanted to kill me in a turret, they probably could. But it looks like they aren't doing that. They're scared that Nautilus is going to come back bottom. See, big thing of ADC right there, right? Our Nautilus died, and then he threw me a ping after, right? I don't know if you guys caught it, but he died and then pinged me, like, with the blink ping, like this, that ping. And we just, we're just chilling. I'm just ADCing. There's no point in dying for your support. It wouldn't make any sense. ADC is about that. We're scaling, right? We, we're getting that scaling going. Wow. Wow wee. Wow we wow 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 that Lee singed. Uh oh. That was stinky. That flash was major stinkies. You saw that? That was a major stinky dinky Lee Sin. Damn, Ezreal with exhaust, that's wild. If he comes up a little more, I'm down to clown. Put a shroom there. Massive. You like that shroom? And I got his exhaust. It was an educated risk. Like, Janna could be there, but I was thinking she wasn't going to be. I just took the risk that she wasn't going to be there. You like that shroom, though? I predicted where he was going to E. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Not to suck my own cock, but come on now. That was a pretty clean shroom. I predicted he was going to E away, and I caught it on the wave. We got his exhaust too, that's kind of massive. So now we can just do that again. Yeah, add on UI, app, same stuff. It definitely helps, but it, it helps for sure. I don't, yeah, like I said, I just personally enjoy that old school vibe, right? It definitely helps, right? You can you can click a button and it shows their timers. You can even get one that shows the jungle timers, right? But yeah, I'm just an old school kind of guy. I just prefer no no add-ons, no outside help. It's just me and a testament to my skill. No ifs, ands, or buts. I'm not saying if you use those add-ons, you're a shitter. But yeah, it just that's how I've always enjoyed my, my gaming. Well, that was a nice trade from him. I don't have any pots. That hurt. Yeah, it's just a me thing. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, um, I feel like the game devs designed the game right to be a certain way. I think WoW is a big sinner with this, right? I feel like the game devs designed WoW not to have the you know the six, uh, you know fucking bars of add-ons, the you know the boss timers where it does everything for you. Right? I, I think it's like, I want to preserve what gaming is, you know? I don't want to compromise that. As silly as that sounds. I think WoW is the biggest sinner, to be honest. Because, like, the add-ons you could do in WoW get absurd. Hey, I just put that word down, Janna. We definitely play Drake here. Oh, jeez. Haven't had any frame drops yet today. That's cool. Let 
I'm just gonna keep pushing the wave. Ajana's roaming, Nault's roaming, it's just me and Ezreal. I push the wave and I stealth. That's how we play this pretty much. I could also go mid, but I don't have to. I don't think I go mid. I'm pretty sure I just sit here till he shows. I'm pretty much sitting here till he walks up. Or until he leaves. I can't really kill him though, so maybe we don't do that. Because I can't kill him. He's playing somewhat... He's playing smart enough, and he also... He has an item, and he has exhaust. Ezreal has really good turn potential. So I'm going to head mid here. Realistically, I'm not going to kill that guy. I can go back bottom when I want to. I'm going to float here for a second. What's this guy cooking? He is cooking up something not impressive. We go hold bottom now. What you looking, Chev? I miss uh what? I got I missed one CS for that kill. Two CS. Karen's on the run, watch out! Garen got a kill in their base. What the hell is going on? Is that cocksucker himself? Is Ezra with him? Nice. <laughs> cocksucker the goat. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had to pick up Chevy. Cosmic is pretty stinky on TML. With Teemo, there's like great items and there's good items. Cosmic is like just an okay item. It's really like down the tier list. I'm gonna go Maligma Balls next. Yapping. Absolutely yapping from the enemy team. alone uh, I mean that's good that answers that question eh <laughs> that answers that question he's not alone so I have a choice here do I just try and get the wave or do I fight 2v1 under the turret I have a shutdown so if they kill me it's very uh, advantageous for them looks like the coast is clear enough it could be in our jangle I don't really want to walk up too crazy. I think I'm just going to hang out for a second. I mean, most of their team's on the map. I'll creep out now. I'm okay just sitting bottom here and not fighting this. Okay, their whole team's there, so I'm going to go push bottom. My team's probably going to die. They have numbers, but I'm just going to keep doing uh, ADC things, get my farm. They got a kill. That's wild. I'm just getting the turret, though. 700 gold would be cooler than joining that fight. Isn't this a lot cooler than joining that fight? 700 gold, 700 gold. You feel me? You smell me? This is what they call macro. This is macro. 700 Gs. Mackerel. Whatever I can actually kill Lee. It'll be close. <laughs> He's got no W. <laughs> he had no W. <laughs> you ain't got him. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. He can kill me, but let's try. Oh! Um... Honestly, not blame Nautilus there. Nautilus's fault. Why was the Nautilus with me? My whore support. Where is Nautilus? Why wasn't he with me? Fucking whore.
Um, this is bad. We should probably just be trying to get Drake. But I started this bad fight. Ooh, hit the shroom. Hit the shroom. You're going the wrong way, Viego. The shroom, the shroom. Oh. Oh, nice try, nice try. Oh, come on. Hit the shroom. No, come on. To be fair, I started that throw, so it's my bad. Nothing's ever a free win on the Rift. I learned that the hard way. When I want to win, you can't stop winning until you actually win. You see what I'm saying there? That was low-key on purpose, I'll be honest. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Nine times sub, still the kill. Immediately type it. I can't actually type, like, even though I'm joking when I say, like, whore, right? Because it's Nautilus, right? His name's Mr. Proxy. It's a joke. It's a take on sexism in the league community. But I can't type it in league chat because then I'll get banned either way. I need a couple hundred gold in my pocket. Oh shit, I missed the wave. Oh damn. Why well, I, I messed that up? I didn't realize it was over there. Whoops. I'm just running around. This is not a macro one moment. This is a dumbass one moment. What am I running around singing Kumbaya? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna just go get my item at this point. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight that. My team, they're they're having a little bit of too much fun. Um, so this is where it starts to get dicey. <laughs> Look, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> but if they don't do Baron, we're okay. No, they're gonna do Baron. Yeah, that's it's gone. Yeah, I mean, just like that. My team's just having a little too much fun. But you know, it is what it is. I'm just gonna try and push bottom. Yeah, Baron's gone. What can you do, right? What can you do about it? I can't do anything. I'm going to try and get turret. I get turret. So we get we get something for nothing. That's always good. Did Aesil get off his base? He did. So I'm going to bounce. Maybe we sneak a kill on the Yana? I'm down to try. Don't hit the cone! <laughs> Let's go! It works like a charm every time. You shall not pass. Oh, Garen, I'm out though. You're on your own, buddy. You shall not pass. I'm just gonna go more damage. <laughs> Only if you promise to give me a cut, typical power. Hey, Sim, Sim Mid. I used to do drugs and smoke the weed, but I'm I've been I've been sober, um, sober from drugs for like five years now. I drink on occasion socially, so I'm not sober from alcohol, but no drugs for at least five years, right? I'm 30. Yes, no drugs for five years. Now you know weed. You know I know the argument. Weed's not a drug, right? It's recreational. It's legal. Blah 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 blah. In my opinion, it's still a drug, but obviously it's not the hardcore ones, right? So that's cool. I'm gonna I'm not gonna leave just in case. I don't think it's worth dying here. I probably shouldn't be here alone, to be honest. I'm just a little ADC, a little a uh, little greedy for sure. Well, if there's two over there, I'm down to push out a little bit. Jace can crack me in the skull, though. But I can't be re respecting a 2 and 6 Jace, right? We're just waiting for Drake, essentially. One minute and 46 seconds, just waiting for Drake. Remember, we're the anchor. Our team's ultra for funning. We are the anchor. Garen's playing well. Vigo's playing okay. But we have to make sure we don't for fun it. 
because our team is our team's for funding like on the turbo two time right And they're gonna start typing again. We're just chilling. Just staying sane, doing gamer moves, waiting for dragon. Yes, sir. Nice, Shanga. Nice. Maybe this works. I mean, that's a pretty good start to the fight. I'll be honest. Okay, nice pick. Really good pick, actually. Right before Drake, too. I did build D ring, but I sold it. I just I, I freaking told Doran to fudge off. I sold his ring. I feel bad, honestly. We're just waiting for Drake patiently. Well, maybe we turn a kill. Maybe we grief. He'll be close, to be honest. I'm down to try. It should be good. I'm pretty fed. I should have enough damage here. Okay, that's massive. That's really big. We turn a kill back. Now it's really important I don't die here to something. I kind of want to just do Drake, to be honest. Jace is behind us and can crack our skulls. We got the kill. That's cool. But we're dead, and it's not cool. Mm, yeah, I'm going to head out. Be right back, y'all. Oh, uh, I'm down to just burst it. I think we can. We flip it. Seems pretty decent. They're TPing behind us. I think we just flip it. Yeah, I like this call, actually. It's a good call. We just flip. I'm going to head out. I'm not going to go for the fight, though, honestly. I'm going to go the other way. But we got soul. That's pretty good for us. Good composure from the squad. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a Dark Seal enjoyer on Teemo. Like if it fits the build path, sure, but generally I just Teemo doesn't have anything to stay alive. Like I build full damage, right? I build full damage every game. So like I'm not building Zanyas, we're not building Banshees, we're doing all the damages. So I feel like I'm gonna die eventually. Like Dark it's pretty easy, right? Dark Seal is good if you get kills. If you don't get kills, it's bad, right? Pretty easy deduction. But, yeah. D the thing is, D-Ring got buffed, right? In the last couple of months, D-Ring got buffed and Dark Seal didn't. So it's kind of like, Doran's Ring is so much better early game. It's insane. Nobody's holding top. But I think we just go into their base, honestly. Garen versus Teemo. Um, so the thing about Garen is that in season 14, you just go Dorn Shield second win. You can survive any lane. So, like, um, also, I'm, wor I'm worried that Jace is over here, like a little sneaky bastard. Um, so, Garen versus Teemo is not that bad anymore. Two, three, Garen can kind of survive any lane these days. I'm worried about Jace because he was top recently. Okay, he's bottom. Sorry, brain lag. Pushing mid's the right call from Lucian, I'll be honest. We should push even though Garen's dead. It's a little risky, sure, but I think it's fine. Pretty much, if I die once this game, we lose. I'm pretty sure. We should keep pushing, but if Lucia doesn't want to, we can't. Basing here is pretty suspect. Doesn't really make much sense. But I'm going to head over. We have Baron, right? It's a Baron power play. It's not a Baron defense play. That's cool. So we're going to push bot and mid and top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
We can just get top end hit without the wave, so we just need to push bottom and mid here. As long as I don't die, we're chilling. Not needs to nut up, yeah. Not needs to like be the front line. Okay. Gotta be careful. Aesol does a lot of damage here. We should look to get top as well. No, that's, I don't see how, like, you, it's kind of hard to lose with three inhabs, I'm not going to lie. Darren dies again. Oh, Lord. Our team wants to play this game as long as possible, eh? Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Mako, you're fat and bald. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Our team is making sure we play this game as long as possible. All right. Listen, just more team bonding. I, I dig it. We're just bonding here as a team. Respect. What's up, Darky Dark Sword? How you doing? Well, team bonding doesn't hurt anybody. This guy's gonna keep pushing. You can tell by the way he's playing. So I'm gonna wait for him. Maybe he's not. Oh, um, he is okay. Well, I just got fucking headshotted, didn't I? Uh, that's pretty bad on my end. That's pretty bad for me. Now I'm extending the game. My fault. I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, Viego's got to buy some time. I got fucking domed. Got his flash. That's cool. Good job from the team. I just got fucking cranked on, bro. I just got hella cranked on. <laughs> I just got fucking turbo cranked in my head. You know, their team's doing a good job of stalling. If they defend one more set of inhibs, like if they survive and we don't end, they definitely win the game after. Are they still elder? Are they still elder? I would think they win the game. Or if they just survive this triple inhib. They're doing a really good job. Where does that Ezra ult go? Garen lived. That's pretty cool. He's Omega. Our Garen, his name is Cocksucker. He's Omega for funning. <laughs> I'm not even mad. Pretty sure we just go do Elder. I don't see how we ever end the game here. I'm just going to wait at Elder. Oh, our team's dead again, right before Elder. Oh, we got a soul flash. It could be worse. All right, so now it's like, okay, let's like, isn't it just FF now? Like, like, how how long can we for fun? Like, how long are we gonna keep for funning till we don't want to play anymore, right? Like, I'm at the point where it's like, okay, guys, like, now it's like, I'm cool to FF. Like, I, my for fun limit has been reached. Winnable. I never had doubted us for a second. Good job, everybody. I'm down for them to FF is what I was saying. What I was saying is, like, they should FF because, like, obviously they're not going to win. That's what I was saying. You guys know that, right? Like, they should FF. For the love of God, hit the fucking nexus. Oh, that's a fat hook. Yeah, I never, I never doubted that game. I never doubted. Never doubted, never worried, never stressed. Always had fun every second of that match. Facts and true. Printer. No dice. You feel me?